Well, hello and uh, Allahu Akbar. What is today? Today is 20th of December. Time is 11.15. Officially, this is the final videos of this series. However, I thought that I should put five videos, few videos, to teach you some Persians. And probably it's going to take me 20 episodes to translate that writing of Baha'u'llah. Because it can't be translated, it has to be word by word explained, translated. And I might take on to do something about the revelation of Bab, because it's such an elusive subject as well for the Baha'is. But tonight, this is the last videos. I dedicate these videos, this whole series, to the world order of Baha'u'llah, of which is the Universal House of Justice, elected in 1963 in Israel, at the present time, the head of the Baha'i faith, and the future institution that would be the Universal House of Guardianship, according to my understanding and finding in the faith. I dedicate this to the world order of Baha'u'llah. I dedicate it to Baha'u'llah himself, to Abdul Baha, to God. I dedicate these videos to Martha Ruth and Tahira. I dedicate it to all the Baha'is of the world. These videos are dedicated to entire mankind, to everyone in the planet. It's definitely all inclusive. To the great scientists that they shaped this material life, to the artists, great artists of our time, to the great reformers, to the great people, I suggest you take a copy of all of these videos in some kind of a hard drive for yourself because we do not know what the future might be. I would like to acknowledge and uh, even apologize if there was any misgiving, if there was mistakes and if sometimes I, um, out of frustrations, I did uh, say words that otherwise would have not been appropriated. I would received an email from the YouTube that they say that uh, I could make money out of these videos if I allow others to advertise on it. My answer would be absolutely no. This is not the part of the things that is for sale. Baha'u'llah did not sell his books, neither can I or I would like to do that, no. Anyways, whenever we uh, start a work like this that addresses the whole world, unfortunately a lot of bad and good people, they get attracted to it. By bad people, I mean people of wrong ideologies. One of them was sending an email to me convoluting the faith of God into many things, 19 suggestions, 19 this and 19 that. I advised him not to do this, he's outside of the faith. The whole idea behind these videos was to break the ice and have you to think, like myself, create a testimonial. I've been in the faith of God for so many years, ever since 18, I'm 55 now, about 40 years. So this is the, after studying the Baha'i faith and Baha'u'llah, these are my understanding. I'm giving it back. I hope it's acceptable by him and by you. But to think that my work is tantamount to 
divisions. Let me say it a million times, if you like, that the Baha'i faith, as is revealed by God, cannot be headed by any things, any organization, any human being, except the Universal House of Justice. That is elected in 1963 by hands of the cause of God in Israel. Every other institution is fake and real and will not get anywhere. There is no other solutions. This is the solution of Baha'u'llah. What we have to understand is there is a difference between Universal House of Justice and its members, between the National Spiritual Assembly and the members comprising it. So is the local Spiritual Assembly. These are the missionaries of God. Baha'u'llah has created it. The people that did go in there it's based on our licensing them. We behind license for the people to get into the local house of assembly or the national or universal house of justice by the virtue of elections. We're electing them, we're giving them license, we're getting them certifying them to go there. You see, these two are different. Baha'u'llah has guaranteed the machinery of the cause of God. He has not guaranteed those who are driving it. The drivers are not guaranteed, just the machinists. There is a very special plan God has in this dispensation, and like the others in the past, that mankind would not be harmed by the religion of God. In the past, as you well know, many people in the name of Moses, in the name of Christ, in the name of Muhammad, have caused great affliction, great transgression, tribulations over mankind. Many thousands and millions of souls suffered by those who took the machinery of God, the faith of God, Islam and Christianity and cause afflictions. Shoei Effendi, as I read it last night to you, safeguarded this fate that it will not cause that kind of a problem. There's a mechanism involved. I'm going to have to explain that tonight to you. In other words, God has read our, our mind but what we might do. This faith of God cannot, will not, never become a, a sectarianism, divisions in it. It's not possible. I mean, I'm not going to say it is impossible, but if, you, if they're Baha'is, everything is written, signed and sealed only 150 years ago. So there's no speculation involved. It's a direct word. Based on those writings, that's all over the internet even right now, you can't divide this fate and call yourself Baha'i. You know? Abdul Bok clearly says, if there are even two universal laws of justice is formed, one in the East and one in the West, they're both wrong. Baha'u'llah says, if two people get together, one says I'm God, one says I'm manifestation of God, they start quarreling and that is that both of them are wrong. Right is not the philosophy here. Right is the concept, if the conclusion that we get. If the conclusion that we make is not making us united, becomes harmful, immediately that is not the cause of God. Baha'u'llah clearly says. So this religion cannot be divided. This is not how it's going to die. No. But there is another way that the Baha'i faith can die completely. In fact, so bad, like no religion of the past would ever have something like that happen to it. But it could happen to the Baha'i faith. I could simply completely die. 
Abdul Ma says it can reduce to just a forgotten name, a few books in some libraries. People completely forget about it. To a friend of mine, I said that the difference between the Baha'i faith and the dispensation of the past is the difference between the televisions and the shovel. If the shovel handles break, both the handle and shovel could be used in some ways. But if the television doesn't work, you can't do anything with it. You can't use it as a coffee table or it's, it's totally useless. Because Baha'i faith is sensitive. Okay? It's like a computer. It's not like a coffee table. If it doesn't work, then there's no use to it. So how could this happen? That this will die completely. <clears throat> I have to explain it to you. <clears throat> Many of us, including myself, have complained from the functionalities of the local spiritual assemblies, of the national spiritual assembly, definitely of Iran and Canada that I have been here. I couldn't complain from the national spiritual assembly of India, no. But in Canada, I've seen it unfortunately, it was not functioning well. And finally I saw that universal laws of justice in Israel is not functioning again properly. So, whose fault is that? Is it the fault of Baha'u'llah? God's work is imperfect? I like to think that way, but it is not. My mind says something else. The plan to have the local assembly, national assembly, and universal of justice is a great plan. But if you want it to work, you need drivers. You need people to be occupied. Who is sending people there in national and local and universal? Me, myself, us. We are licensing these people to go there. So it's our fault if it's not working. In other words, assembly is the mirror. You don't like it? Look at the mirror. It's you. The cause is very important. If we are not real Baha'is, which means we haven't read and studied Baha'i faith, we didn't get into engage in teaching, we did not start in deepening the Baha'is in the society where we live, then we're not what we are expected to be as a Baha'i. Kitab Ahlas clearly says, you got to believe in me and then believe in what I say. If you come with one of these, I'm not accepting it, Baha'u'llah says. A lot of people have good acts, but they don't know Baha'u'llah. That's not going to get them anywhere. I explained that, the logic of this before. Same as you're a Baha'i, but you're not acting. Nothing is going to happen. These two are twins, Baha'u'llah says. So, okay, God knows that were people, the same people as the past, we might use these assemblies in national, this universal, against humanity. We might create a dictatorship, none like it has been seen. Is This is possible. How would God want to prevent this? He has put a leash around our neck. That is the assembly. So, if we're not good, what we elect is not good also. If we are imperfect, then our local is imperfect, then our national is not good, then our universal the house of justice is not going to function. Okay, if we're not good, what we're going to make also is not good. If it is not good, it's not going to get anywhere. It's not going to harm people. It's going to die on its own. It will implode on its own weight, die. Becomes a means in it to its own end, as Shovey says. But if we're good, then our national is good, our local is good. And then we're allowed, we're certified, we 
pass the test. We can't take over the world by this ideology of God. But the moment we're bad, God decided. Because we have to obey our own thought, our own elected people. This is very amazing if you think about it. We're bound by the decree and order of those who we elect. We are not good, they are not good, that which is not good is going to confront this one. Together, they annihilate each other. None of them is good. So, what do we do? Choga Pendi very wisely says Baha'is in an area should not be more than 18 to 20 people in a local locality. I know for sure National of Canada or US are trying to push people not to be in a big city and go around. So the national and the local and the universal definitely is better than the individual Baha'is. By God I can say that. None of the people Baha'is in Canada could take initiative when Ayatollah Khomeini in Iran was killing the Baha'is to actually save the Baha'is of Iran to bring them here. Individual Baha'is, they would not have this power, they would not take it, but National of Canada did. U.S. did. Other assemblies around the world did. Universal Laws of Justice did to help us, to save us. So, that's good. What we elect is better than us. It's very amazing. How does Baha'u'llah work is very amazing. But if we are weak, our uh, assemblies and everything else is weak, in this, you know, equations, we're no good. Our government is no good. So the no good is not going to rule over the people of the world and tell them what to do. They're not going to happen. So back to what to do. Okay, we're 1820 Baha'is in this city, 100 people, let's say. And I see that this assembly is not working well. Why? Because I read the books and I see that these decisions are and Baha'i decisions. I've taken it a couple of times to the local, trying to explain it to them. They told me that, ah, 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 ostracized. Many Baha'is are ostracized. Others have no power. They say, nah, we don't want to do anything with it. So what do you do? It's very simple. Create deepening classes. Study the topic to know what's wrong. Do not backbite assemblies in the name specifically or people. But just bring Baha'is in your house. You're allowed. You don't need a permission for this. Try to have deepening. And get this 50, 60 Baha'is in an area to understand where the faith is and what should be done. The most people, they know what it is. There will be a new assembly next year. That assembly will be a better one. So why am I in these positions? Is this the, because of the Universal Law of Justice or National of Canada? Not really. Because of you Baha'is. So I've taken the initiative. I started these videos to see if I can get people to come to their senses. To see what to do, you know. This big list of many people getting ostracized. Clashes of characters, you know. Clashes of opinion is good, but clashes of character is bad because people cannot be separated from their characters. You know, they have to be they have to be separated from our ideologies. When you're meeting another Baha'i, you put what you have on the table, and if he sorry, pissed on it, don't worry. He talk about what you made, not yourself. And then to like politely respond back, why, and so on and so forth. So this is how one assembly can be changed very easily. Actually, it doesn't it does not take more than a year for a person who's responsible. Well, these kind of people are all over the cities. Every city has few people that are uh, they don't like what they see. They have to do something about it. It is very easy. Then. That's the local exchange. There's a new national. So the national goes up there, even they send one good member in the Universal Laws of Justice that knows exactly what's going on, studied fully the Baha'i faith, things will improve, things will change. A situation like mine does not occur. 
I'm not by any means an infallible individual or even a good Baha'i. I don't know. I just don't want even to just judge myself. I'll leave it to God, to you. But I'm a Baha'i. I should not be called infidels. What kind of word is this, you know, to tell me? My children should not be told that they can talk to their father. How are we going to unite them? Clearly, there's something wrong. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, this is a beautiful system. Baha'u'llah says, you don't obey my laws, you break it. I'm going to make you to obey your own laws. You elect people. We call that assemblies. You have to obey them. It's your own elected people. You don't, then you don't respect yourself. If they're bad, you're complaining, it's yourself. You are lazy, Mr. Knowing. You are lazy because you're not teaching to others what to do. So, there are some of their solutions. I hear it here and there that let's get rid of the high administration altogether. We don't need it. Some, you know, disillusioned people are thinking that way. Go ahead. You're not the only one thinking like that. A lot of people were thinking like that. But if you read the Baha'i books a million times, at least there's 1,000 places that references to the Baha'i administration. Without it, Shori Effendi says it's impossible. It says if you separate the administration from the Baha'i, you have to separate Abdul Baha from Baha'u'llah. They just, it's not possible. It is not then Baha'i faith. Then call Baha'u'llah philosopher. Somebody came and said a few things. Don't call it religion, faith, and manifestation of God. You gotta go against everything you know if you go against the fact that we don't need administration in the case. Okay. Maybe in the past people at the time of Islam or Christianity they could cheat people and say that, you know what? There's no book, no this, no that. We're gonna do it and we're gonna decide this is right and people go for it. Today is not like that. All the writings are all over the internet. People of today in Canada and United States are not the people of Rome. They're not the people of Arabia. They're million times, billion times more intelligent. You know. So, it is not possible to create a situation that you think you're going to get anywhere. It's not possible. There is no other way except what I told you that has to be done, that they have to go and change the situation. So, so, if from being a Baha'i you don't want anything except um, name and just some ceremonies, a social club that you get together. Let go of it. Well, if it will die, you know, that way. It's not going to go. But if you're real Baha'is, you have to do something about it. See, 16 years I've been locked out. Bob was locked in, I'm locked out. Baha'u'llah was locked in, I'm locked out. They throw me out. 16 years. I told him the videos. There are things they've told behind me. It's beyond my belief that these things can be said about me. They even called me pimp. Believe it. Because I'm Baha'i, I, uh, I'm doing this for the sake of Baha'u'llah. I'll take it 
it's not an insult to me, it's an insult to him, really. Those who disagree with uh, the universal laws of guardianship, they're slapping the face of Shobay Effendi, not me. I'm just a mailman, I brought the new film. But they've done all of that to me 16 years right now. See, I'm harder, firmer. I'm like a nail. The more you bang it, the firmer it gets. Be like that. Because I'm a spiritual Baha'i, I'm not a social Baha'i. 24 hours I think about death, about the next life, next level of existence. All of this to me is transient. Possession. You can't get me to a department store to buy a clothes. I just can't do it. You just go buy anything, I'll take it. I don't like car, I don't like house, I don't like anything. The only thing that I could not let go of is a Baha'i faith, books, books I like. Nothing else you can give me, you know, transient, possession. I remember I was in the train, you know, the cabin sitting with other people in India. I saw little children, they're fighting over the handle of the door. One child takes the handle of the cabin, trying to open and close the door. The other child's handle is mine, and that one's mine. I just looked at it. I said to myself, we are just like these kids. They put our hand on something in this world, and they say, it's mine, it's ours. It is such a shameful thing for me to say I own something material. It is like, I'm sorry, going to the toilet, put the shit and put it in my pocket and say it's mine. It's that bad. Please be a user, don't be a possessor. You're dying every day. You can say I'm living every day, but to me you're dying every day. Every day you're dying one day closer to your death. What life? This is the life of my suit. That's the only clothes I have, my body. I'm not here. Neither are you. You know. Anyways, I'm oriented that way. So, if you're serious in understanding these things, the next level of existence, that's where you begin to be. Here you're not, you're just in a womb. The first one was your mother, the next one is this. The first one, Mother Nature, help you. This one, the Father Nature, it helping you. Because you know, your spirituality will have to grow. This has been told to you thousands of times. So, um, possession, me possessing material. It's exactly like a man in the balloon falling and um, they're fighting over possession. What do you do? You throw things down. That's the only way you can soar. The more you throw down, the more you get rid of, the more you soar. Every day, uh, train to die properly. To die good is that you have to take lesson of detachment. Detach yourself for the best beautiful things you like. Give it to your friends, give it to your daughter, give it to your children. You know, put the house in the name of your child, your death, that. Just don't possess anything if it's possible. You know, it's a lot easier to life. So this covenant of God, as I said, will not be broken. It is impossible to break this covenant. Everything is written in the book. The prison was broken in the past because things were not written. Everything is written here now. You're not going to break it. All what you do, you're breaking your own covenant and you're going away. Believe me, if the covenant of God can be broken, then that is not the covenant of God. Then it's no good. If it's breakable, break it. You can't. Nobody can. So, uh, 
I will have to conclude. There's not much more to say. Let's reiterate again. I do believe as a Baha'i in Bob, the forerunner of the Baha'u'llah, in Baha'u'llah, the manifestation of God, the founder of the Baha'i faith, in Abdul Baha, the infallible interpreter, in Shobi Effendi, the holy, infallible interpreter and guardian of the cause of God, in Universal House of Justice, elected in 1963 in Israel as the only head of the Baha'i faith till the next manifestation of God. Beside which, there has to be universal house of guardianship that will have to come in future. That's what I have read and understood from the faith of God. It's up to you if you accept this last part or not. But accepting it is not nullifications of the other things. It's just an additional thing. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, so it's up to you. Me, I believe it is a part of the Baha'i faith. So there is no other Baha'i faith, there's only one brand. I'm the elder of God, an official elder of God. Uh, God knew you were going to do these things. Baha'u'llah knew. This is why he put five elders on the back burner. And they will come, they clarify things. I've clarified a lot of things for you. That's the only reason why am I an elder of God. Because I've said things to you that nobody has said before. Because of that, I'm not seeking your obedience. To obey me is infidelity. To obey me is blasphemy. You don't need to do that. I'm just a person. But the books are there to follow. You can help me to do things. All it has to be under the universal laws of justice. Not me, nobody in the world can do it. Finally, whatever I have told you right now, I'm like a child that's gone to this school <clears throat> for so many years. I've studied, <coughs> excuse me, I practiced it, and these are my understanding that you're listening to. I hope you accept it. I hope it becomes useful to you, one way or other. And I hope Baha'u'llah, my father, your father, the father of the universe, accept. This is what I tried. This is what I strived. This is what I understood. And I gave it to you for free. May God be with you. May Baha'u'llah be with you. I hope to hear from you. I was to finishing this, giving myself another year before 2012. But in the 2011, it's already done. It's a full year to think about and to see what you want to do, my dear Baha'i friends. Allahu Akbar.